My name's Quentin Reynolds, I'm 43, going on 44. Uh, a few months ago I was in a bar with some friends, sports bar, I've been watching a, a boxing fight, and I made a negative comment to a friend. He then bet me £200 that I couldn't get fit enough to fight as a professional. But the other point is the purpose of doing this is to show how fit you can get through boxing. Um, so I haven't done anything like this before, so I'm sort of starting as couch potato-y type person, um, but with an eye on the health aspect, so we start in a couple of days' time. So, see what happens. I'm very strict and I'm hard when it comes to the training side of it. When I take people on to train, the first two to three weeks I ease them in gently, to do it, but I start picking the pace up gradually as we go along, and then we really start working. We've arrived here on the second day of training, and basically the gym's been repossessed, it's closed, and we've got nowhere to go and train. So I've swung Joe, and we're going to go and find. He's going to go and find somewhere else. Um, they've even taken down the sign, which is a bit mental, really. Or well, someone's nicked it for a souvenir. I suppose it's worth it, whatever. Um, so off I go. Uh, no train today. Going up a Mars bar, I think. Joe has found another venue for Quentin to train. Based in Finchley, London, my gym is owned by Don Charles, a trainer, manager, and Joe's long-term friend. Once those bandages are on. There's a ritual box that goes through. You go through your motion, you go through all your punching techniques, and that also gets you, it's a part of your warm-up routine, okay? So you're not putting the gloves on while you're sort of cold, you know? You already get yourself going. Come on, one, two, hook, cross. Come on, where is it? One, two, hook, cross. There you go, come on. One, two, hook, cross. 10 days. He's kicked into it because he not only has he, he's trained with me, he's trained with another trainer, Charles, in the morning. So I, he gets trained in the morning and trained in the evening by two trainers who are, are, have got contrasting styles, which would make him a better person when it comes to actually boxing. And that, that's his own doing. I haven't suggested him. He came to me and asked me, do you mind if I train? I said, no, go ahead. It's good to have two types of trainers. There's, there's, there's world champions who've got three trainers. Uh, there's fighters in this way, got two free trainers training them anyway. I like you going hard and take yourself to the limit. And when you're training, if you're training for an hour, train for an hour. When I say train for an hour, all this minute breaks and this and that, I like to go through them. With my head boy John, when he was sparring, when he was young, 17, 18 years old, I had him in the ring for half an hour, non-stop, changing different people to spar with, different people to spar with. And he had to learn to deal with all different types of styles. Obviously with Quinton, we can't do that at the moment because his is such a short, short period of time, six months. So the sparring that you'll do with me and maybe there's a couple other people I might chuck him in with to spar with to get a contrasting in styles. We'll, we'll do it that way. Now Quentin can settle into months of hard training ahead. All right, 10, stay in that position, stay in that position. 10 press ups. Despite the regime, old habits die hard and Joe soon catches Quentin cheating on his strict diet. The car was parked in the in the car park there by McDonald's and Nando's. Where were you? Nando's or McDonald's? Oh, Be no. truthful. No, I was a neighbour. No, 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 no. I went and had my, my, my lunch and dinner, which was nine nuggets. You were in McDonald's? Yeah, Why did you go to Nando's? Most people go to a way, have a way, and then they go and have uh, spaghetti or, or, or pasta or, or jack potato or something. He goes and has McDonald's. Don Charles takes Quentin through the many boxing moves he will need and some conditioning while Joe concentrates on building his fitness and stamina. That's it. That's it. Come on, Joe. 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 Come on, Training includes many varied techniques with skipping and running, forming a vital part in getting Quentin into shape and fighting fit. 
Reach for it. Thirteen. There you go. Come on, come on, come on. Spring it. Fourteen. Make it snappy. Fifteen. There you go. This is my first web log. Um, we've been doing this for five weeks now. This is the fifth week. Uh, change your body quite considerable. Feel a lot better in my head. A um, lot sharper. Get things done a bit more. Still a little bit sluggish, but I think that's down to the shit. I'm still eating a bit of shit food. And what we need basically to get a nutritionist on board, get rid of the fat around the middle. So look at the process of getting my stomach down, which is currently dropped two inches down by another three inches and to firm up on the legs and just to train to get a lot of leg muscle and definition there. Straight, yeah, and then do it. Go on, pull yourself, go on. Yeah! One, two, wicked, three, there you go, power, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's cool, just give me ten. That's very hard, my friend, yeah? I couldn't do a ten. So do you, do you tend to get little, little pains in your head after you've done a lot of training sometimes? Yeah. Do you get like pains in your head? Of course, like, yeah. You do, okay, I just want to double check. No, it's it. normal. The blood it's pumping. Normal. Uh, blood circulating, pumping. Because, you know, if you're straining, you're, uh, yeah, right? All of a sudden you've stopped. The body thinks you're still working out. Gotcha. Entering the sixth week, Joe's increasing the pace. introducing new exercises on a daily basis. This includes additional bag work, shadow boxing, floor exercises and spin cycling sessions. I think he's doing really well. He's got great uh, recovery rate mm -hmm. and he likes to do everything right. That's what I like. He does everything right. Even when he's tired, he'll push himself to the limit to get there. And uh, if I say, oh, once or twice, I've, I've tested him by saying that would do for today, he'll go, no, 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 I want to finish it. And that's what I like. Quentin Reynolds is a self-confessed couch potato, who at 43 has set out to become as fit as a professional boxer and have a fight in six months. You in McDonald's? I'm still eating a bit of shit food and going to a Mars bar, I think. But he's not keeping to his diet, so he's going to seek advice on nutrition. I would say to people initially, I think the more rigid and structured you are in your diet and you know, the more focus you get on your nutrition, I think some of the people almost get so blinkered that you need to be flexible. I think that's one big thing is, you know, I, I might recommend to one athlete a certain thing and say to them, look at this, possibly consider this. But then to another athlete, they might be in the same training squad, or something totally different, because you know it's, it's very individual a diet. I think obviously you know if you every day you're tucking into a Mars bar, then obviously you know you start to say, well, you know, as you've said, is there possibly something I can fill it with or change it to something which might be a little bit better for me? You know, in a way, you, a diet is such you can almost you can eat what you like, but at the same time, you've, it's almost that ma marriage of being eating what you like, but at the same time knowing that you've got certain limitations about how many times you can probably eat those things. You want to keep your fat content quite low if you can. So, I mean, it's quite generic, but if you say about 10, yeah, I would say about 10% of your diet, you're looking at fat. And when, with the fat we're talking, is try and keep away from saturated fats and, you know, these, these trans fatty acids we're talking about now. So you look at things like fish oil, or fish oils, omega-3, any sort of nuts are quite good in terms of providing some sort of fat, but they also give you a little bit of protein in there as well. That's one thing to be focused on protein and get protein content in, but, you know, above maybe sort of two grams for every kilogram of your weight, that's excess, your body is going to start damaging it. It's of no benefit at all. What you also find is if you have a lot of carbs, you also get a lull. You, you, I don't know if you ever felt that sort of mid-afternoon kind of Sleepy. sort of sleepiness, which is from the carbohydrates you eat at lunchtime. So what you don't want to do is eat, have a breakfast that's very high in carbs, and then suddenly from mid-morning you're a bit kind of lethargic, and when you want to get in the gym and do a good session, so I'd say just eat, eat a nice light breakfast, some fruit, some yogurt, something like that. And then if you've got train sessions during the day, obviously it gets harder to have structured meals at set times. But I think the main things you focus on is that during the course of the whole day, you have the carbohydrates and the protein across the day that you should. Come on. Two. 
Quentin takes the advice on board, but his lapses and the pace of the training start to take its toll. something and it's another thing for that thing to, to enter your system. We're at the stage where I believe he started to um, enter his system. When you learn the moves and you start to execute the moves and when they look natural, when you do it effortless, the moves he's learned in the last six weeks is only just now doing it uh, without thinking too much about it. We're making um, good progress. The reality of the intense training and the massive lifestyle change are now kicking in. And after only six weeks in, Quentin is doubtful about carrying on. Upset. You might hit your fat out of Let's go. Oh, come on, come on, Quentin. Come on. Don't give up. Wipe his back, come on. And let me see ten good ones. When Quentin decided he'd like to try this project that he's doing now to uh, do a six months intense boxing training course and to have a fight at the end of it after the six months to see how he's progressed. Uh, he was he came in very enthusiastic and not to say that he's not enthusiastic now, but boxing training is different to most training where you, you have to do running, you have to do the gym work, you have to do sparring, you, there's, there's quite a lot of things you have to get into. And uh, Quincy was, the first six weeks, he was training quite well, he was getting into it. But as like most training sessions, you get to a stage where it becomes like a humdrum thing in your life. By the way, the punches behind the back of the head are illegal. What's the punch in the back of the head? Uh, you'll see. Sorry about that. No, it's all right. I'll get you back next time. So where are you going to fat lip? <laughs> I can give you a fat lip. You keep dropping your hand. To give morale boost, a meeting has been arranged with former British and European welterweight champion Dave Boy Green. My name is David Robert Green. I started boxing when I was 13 years of age. I had 105 amateur fights up to I was 21 when I, I then turned professional. Uh, I turned professional in 74. I had 41 professional fights, 137 and lost four. And in that, in them 41 fights, I won two British championships: the British Low Welterweight and the British Welterweight Champion. I won the European low weight and the European world weight champion. What's the thing you didn't like most about training? There was nothing. I love training. Yeah. It's crazy because when I first started professional boxing, I was up at five o'clock in the morning doing my road work. I'd leave my house about six thirty for work. I used to work on a farm, on a carrot farm. I'd work then till about half past four, and you know I think that's the way to do it. But I never listen. I never worried about fighting because I I, I believed in myself. I believed that I could I could do it. And I think you can make it. You're gonna, you're gonna be in the championship. Me. <laughs> <laughs> but you like me. You, you like me. You got a good start because you're ugly. <laughs> I didn't thank mean you. that. I'll thank you, Ali. <laughs> well, basically, I, when I set out to do things, I set out to do them and I do them properly. And I'm not going to give up now. It'd just be stupid. I mean, there's several times I thought I can't be asked. But um, yeah, you, you do that with a lot of things. I think in life. <laughs> Thank you.
With renewed focus on the task ahead, Joe and Don Charles introduced Quentin to hill work and running routines. Hello. Hello. How are you? Okay, how are you? Yeah. How do you feel, Quint? Yeah, I'm alright. Really? How do you feel, Quint? I feel alright, honestly. Yeah? Yeah, not, not at all. Not at all, no problem. If we had to go back to the gym and work out, I'd be alright. Yeah? Because you've got to go to the stage now, you know, you've got to do it. It's week 12 and uh, halfway through the training schedule. Um, my trainers don't think I've done enough. I've got to really kick it in, kick it in a bit. Um, food, uh, you're not sticking to anything particularly, but I'm losing weight and I just need to get some sort of... Now, this week, I need to get some structure to what I do and what I eat. I've been wearing my heart rate monitor and seeing how many calories I burn. It's quite amazing. I do about uh, 15 in the workout. When I do run, which I've got to do more of, it's another five, 600 calories, which is pretty cool. I mean, in the bloody solar plexus, the hard, but I had to sit up in my bed for, that, for a week in pain, and your trainer does that to you, doesn't it? Well, Quentin, for one, I didn't hit you in the solar plexus. Well, where do you hit I hit you up the ribs. Okay. I hit you in the rib, I bruised your rib. And that's part of boxing. Unfortunately, your bruised rib lasted longer than it should have done, which means you were soft. But you're not soft anymore. You become a little bit firmer, and you become a little more determined from, from the, the bruise. You know, it's made you stronger. I mean, I would have said 99% of people who didn't have to box would have called it a day, but you haven't. I like your enthusiasm. You have to have the smack in the face. You have to have the black eye. You have to have the bruised lips. You have to get smacked in the jaw. You have to have the dizzy brain for a little while because when you're in your fight, you, that will happen. So what do you do? How do you cope? Unless you do it in sparring and training, you won't know what to do when you actually get hit. And believe you me, as much as you're training and fitness, and when you actually get in the ring, time goes so quick, it's a blink of an eyelid. And when you're fighting someone at your own standard, they just come up, bang. It's like two people flinging punches from every single angle just to get one in. And 50% of your, your, your fitness, your, your, your mental stamina is gone by the time you get into the ring because you're thinking about the fight, what you're gonna do, what's this person gonna do. And as I said, when you get into the ring and it's going to start, your legs go, they get weak. And you start banging the bar, you start dancing about, but moving around in the arms, and you're ready to go. But the bruising, the bruises, is part of the game. I look forward to more then. You look forward to it. Fantastic. I found out something about myself this week, which is I don't like pain. I'm more like um, this joke, joke to Jar. I said, I'm a lover, not a fighter because uh, he's the trainer. And um, we had a, a sparring session for early part of it Monday, and he hit me really hard in the body shot. I don't mind being smacked in the head. I didn't cope with that. I don't know why, it must be mental, but getting hit in the, I, I hate getting hit in the stomach. I always had that when I was a kid. We used to lock people down when I fought, because I was a bit of a street kid, you know, street fighter. So I used to just not get, I'd hate getting hit. I'd just close people down. and. When, with boxing, you're exposed, and I'm not scared of getting hit in the tummy and in the, in the chest. And, and after he worked me before, and uh, and the rib that really fucking hurt. You know, do a double shift, a double workout with Joe. Unfortunately, he's uh, been something's happened. He can't make it. So I'm going out with a couple of dollies. Yes. <laughs> Why not? I won't eat too much food though. I won't stay out too late because I have training tomorrow, 8:30. I really don't want to do it today, but uh, I really don't want to do it actually. But I'm going to have to. I've got two sessions today um, with uh, the boys. With Joe, got two sessions with Joe. Sorry, I'm a bit fucking knackered actually. Um, okay, so I went out last night with some mates and had a load of food and a load of drink, and um, that's going to stop. So um, I'm feeling knackered. Don't want to do this, but um, I'm gonna have to, don't I? That's how it is, really. <sighs> yeah, there you go. Off I go. <laughs> On my jolly old way. Yes. Oh, my God, you can. It's classic you hit me with a ball on my 
It's now 10 weeks in with 16 weeks to go. So far his training has been learning the moves and building fitness. His doubts have come and gone but there is a bigger challenge ahead. This will test him further and he will have to face the fact that he will be getting hit full on and without mercy. This is when his lapses in training and diet will catch up on him. Remember, I'm an old pro, ish, boxer, boxer, and uh, anybody at your level won't do what I can do. Hi, it's me again. It's recording week 15. This week had a couple of injuries. Uh, one was uh, smacking the ribs, again, higher this time than before. Oh, yeah, I'm a good old Joey boy, uh, hurt like fuck. At the time I thought, well, I can't be asked with this, why am I doing it? Um, changed my attitude a bit, spoke to both trainers. I mean, Joe thinks I should be sparring now. Charles doesn't think I'm ready, so I'm gonna have to address that on Monday. Little does Quentin know that Joe and Don Charles intend to throw him in at the deep end on Monday morning at the gym. Stop filming. Quentin Reynolds is a self-confessed couch potato who at 43 has set out to become as fit as a professional boxer and have a fight in six months. He is 15 weeks in and has taken to the task well, but with the occasional doubts it's recommended he talk to a sports psychologist to discuss some issues he has, which still include his diet. As a sports psychologist, I'm interested in helping people prepare for competition and then deal with the demands of competition. Some of the major problems faced by athletes are anxiety in competition and also dealing with the demands of training. What I find is, the harder I work, the more I want to go and do something naughty. 
as a reward. So much reward. Yeah, so it's, it's reward. like it's like oh, I can I can reward myself now because I've been so good. But the course is definitely it's detrimental. I think also you you got to consider the fact of where you're coming from into into the sport at the moment, and at the same time you're trying to change habits that you've had in terms of nutrition, general lifestyle, and training. So you're trying to make an awful lot of changes probably in a short period of time. So I think you need to consider that and, and may, that may affect your own behaviour. But you may benefit from setting more specific goals and uh, be more process orientated. So you realise that you've got to have maybe a certain body fat level or you may need to be a certain weight. But rather than focusing on the outcome, you actually spend more time worrying about the processes or thinking about the processes. So you either record what you're doing in terms of nutrition uh, and keep a food diary, but also keep records of all the other training that you do every day. The pressure is on, but the advice has helped. His training has stepped up to another level yet again. It's my birthday today, I'm 44, and I'm feeling um, very well. Day. Uh, a bit um, pleased that we've changed the training regime on that side of things, on the uh, training side of things. I'm oh, feeling good actually. Yeah. Well, about a year ago, this shirt would be very tight on me, or just just a little bit out like that. And now it's all flowing. Like it's a big, huge shirt. But, um, so that give you an idea. That's that now, and that was this now then. So I actually filled this shirt out. It's very full. Sharper, letter U. Come on, letter U. I want to see that move. I want to see that. Don Charles introduces Quentin to new techniques, packing in months of work into a few short weeks. That's what it is, again. Just picked up a gum shield today, which has been specially made for me. And here it is. You've got my name on it. The perfect fit. Oh, 120 pounds. That'll stop me getting my teeth knocked out, hopefully. Set. Uh-uh. When you're stepping, as you set, that foot's got to be... Okay. With training, there is inevitable injury, which is when a visit to the physio can help. Posture first of all. So any pain is just standing there or that's all okay? Okay. Okay. And check you're in alignment there, excuse me. Turn around for me. problems because using the, uh, the pecs, the, get the power of the shoulder muscles, they can have some sort of impingement, obviously trauma sort of injuries, uh, and also looking at the lower leg itself, if he's rotating on his knees, he's also done some cartilage damage in there, so that's why we're just having a little look with the biomechanics, with the muscle, um, the muscle balance, then we can give them exercises and try and um, prevent any sort of injuries occurring. Straighten it out for me, just let, there we go. Just try and relax as we straighten it out there. Okay, so this is again, which is a provocative test. We're trying to see if the... So I had a bit of an injury in my legs and he just put me right in a few items for later on, how to watch what I'm doing. It's really good, made me really refreshed and sort of ready to go. So I'm going to have a few of those over the next few months because they really help as you're training uh, to get rid of a few aches and pains. You go for a run, then come have some porridge. But I never do the run. I always do the run with my trainer. So you have some, you have some porridge, mug or a cup, and then uh, with some bananas, bananas, and um, that's it for breakfast. No, that's my breakfast. That's what I do. So I'm going to go run with the camera and see how I feel at the end of it. Should be very interesting. Back runner. Nice little 
warm up anyway. Yeah. The most difficult part of training for me is getting up in the morning. Less so now, but when I first started it was. Um, but once you're there, you're there, so you just get on with it. Running I would not do if I had it. I didn't have a trainer to try to run with me. It just wouldn't happen. Not to the extent we train really hard, we run really hard. Um, getting to a point now where I'm out running my trainer, which is funny. But um, that's good. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, if I feel, if I sound a bit monotone, it's because I'm knackered, because I just trained this morning. And I just had some porridge, so it's a bit like, a bit like, Quentin Reynolds is a self-confessed couch potato who at 43 has set out to become as fit as a professional boxer and have a fight in six months. He has taken on two trainers, Jay Gregory and Don Charles, to help him and is now 22 weeks into his process. Joe has brought in British heavyweight boxer John McDermott to take Quentin through his paces and some friendly light sparring. It's hard, you, know, you, get, you get snappy, you get nervous all the time, so you take it out on people. But other than that, it's okay. It's nerve wracking. It's nerve wracking to think some bloke wants to bash your head in. <laughs> no, it's all right. No, it's all right. It's, it's, it's good. No, it's, uh, well, well, once the fight's finished, you can't wait to get back in again. That's what I mean. It's, it's, it's really weird to explain. Once you've experienced it, you want to get back there again. But before the fight, you get really nervous and you think, oh, bloody hell. But like after the fight's done and you've won or you've boxed well, you want to get back in again as soon as possible. Jeff, Jeff, get back here. Go back, go forward, go forward and again. That's it. Here we go. Go, push it back, push it back, push it back, push it back. Why don't you head out there for good work? So this is week 22 of 26. We've uh, come a long way, obviously. Um, been training with John McDermott, heavyweight guy. Uh, he's number eight in the country, which has been interesting because he's, he's just so fit for the guy. He's another couple of stone heavier than me, about three stone heavier. I'm absolutely on the button at 14 stone right now, and I want to get down another stone. I don't know how much that's possible, if that's possible, but really watching the food, been really quite good actually, which makes a change. Also going to the gym earlier in the training session, so I'm going every half an hour before Joe does, two or three times a week. Next week it's going to be every day. Get there, start getting um, warmed up. I prefer warm up myself. I don't want him to train, get me warmed up because it's just like, oh, 
That's still hard work, so if I do it under my own steam, it's better. So I'm doing, uh, at the moment, two, and a half, two to two and a half hours in the morning and an hour and a half in the afternoon. So that's at least four hours a day. The process is coming to an end with only a few weeks left to prepare for the big day. Well, this is week 26. Next week's 27, and that's when we have a fight at the end of it on the 15th. So I've been training very hard, sparring now, I've got a black eye. And we'll be sparring the rest of this week and uh, training. Next week, run it down a bit, and then we have the fight. To see whether I actually would have been able to become a professional boxer had I have been a lot younger. As he gets himself ready for the fight, Quentin sets out to talk to a boxing manager and promoter to find out what roles these people play in a professional boxer's life. The role of manager is obviously looking after the fighter um, in, in every aspect, arranging fighters, arranging a training plan, making sure they have a, a correct professional uh, trainer to train them. It's you know making sure that that trainer is, is training them correctly, devising that program so that that boxer is going to get advantageous, you know, is advantageous to the fighter. Um, setting up fights for him, you know, li li sort of liaising with promoters and and sort of getting fights for the fighter, which again would be advantageous to him in his future career. Uh, there's a lot more as well, personally, you know, they always say don't get too involved with your fighter, but, you know, you're on a sort of like everyday basis with him, and you know, it's hard not to, you know, you've got to make sure that those opponents are going to be advantageous to him, and you've got to make sure that the whole package is there, so, you know, you get a good promoter, a good manager, obviously, that's myself, and then um, you get a good trainer, and you know, it's, it's a full one-stop package for that fighter. And you're in charge of everything, so if it all goes wrong, it's your fault as the manager because you're managing that package. The first thing you have to do is find a venue. And the venues can be expensive, especially... How, how much, typically? Well, you know, if I, was doing a, if I was doing a card around this way, and the, and the purses came to about 15 grand, which is not a lot of money, but the small shows I do, really, if the purses come to 15 grand, the venue and the overheads before I start, as an average, cost me £6,300. So it's £6,300 before you sell a ticket. So you've got to pull back a bit of money. And that's why small shows, without the help of TV, nine, nine times out of ten, always lose money. And, they, you know, and as a businessman, you, you would say, well, why do you do it? And you would say the same thing to most small promoters. It's purely a love affair. Boxers are boxing people. And boxing to me has always been a vocation. Yeah. Hi, I'm James. I'm Quentin. How are you doing? Hi, let's go. It's the weigh-in before the fight, and Quentin will also be taking a VO Max test, which will show how fit he is after all the months of training. Prior to this, he had one last check with his doctor. Speed by 0.5 kilometer every minute. So you're going to start oh, off at 8 kilometers an hour, increase by 0.5 every minute, and we're going to run you until you fatigue. They want you to do first of all, just put your hand over the mouthpiece and just breathe out very lightly. Oh, very lightly. Okay. Is that the pause you're down there? That's it, we're all cool. yeah. that straight away. So now I'm just going to get you up to uh, the pee up. One on the gradient. Run at once, uh, mimicking outside conditions, and we're going to take you up now to eight kilometers nice and slowly. So, start to move. Okay, we'll start the test. Thanks, 
there um, 45 millilitres per kilogram per minute. So that's 45 millilitres of oxygen per kilogram of lean body mass yep. per minute your body's consuming, mm -hmm. um, which is a good baseline measure for getting your fitness off. So from past research we've been looking at um, over the last couple of days, it's for middleweight uh, amateur boxers, we're looking around the 43 to around the 50 to 57 mark as they're going into professional. I have the residual fitness of a middleweight boxer, amateur, who's going to professional for the age range of between 24 and 30. Or I'm 44, so I'm quite sure. Who's the dad? Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? I was expecting you, well, what? It's the day of the fight. Joe and Don Charles have picked a boxer most matched to Quentin's abilities for a 10 round bout of three minutes each with one minute breaks between rounds. After six months and many hours of training, injuries, doubts and lapses, Quentin has won his bet. He has trained as a professional boxer and had a fight, giving his opponent a bloody nose. Thank you.